I'm grateful to see so many people here who love our state just like I do. It is amazing the work you all do. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, uh, the fact that you love our state and its incredible natural resources, its wonderful clean air, its waters, waterfalls, our oceans and rivers, the fact that you're here working to make it better means so much to me. It's, it's an honor for me to, to receive this award, but it's more of an honor for me to share it with you who've worked so hard for many years, knocking on doors, making phone calls, doing the research, advocating, attending rallies, making yourself more knowledgeable about what it means to protect our natural resources. But we also need to share it for the future because of the challenges ahead. I, I got my first, uh, my first love for my state and our environment when I would walk with my dad on our farm in Nash County, North Carolina. How we would walk through the woods, how we would walk through the open fields, and he would tell me how important it was for us to take steps to keep it clean. And he wanted to be a part of giving our environment to me and me having the responsibility of giving it to our children and children's children. That meant a lot to my dad. And I, I gained those values from him. And I, I, I think you've heard this old saying that in order to know where you're going, you got to know where you've been. And when I look at the people in this room, I think about, at least before the last few years, I think about over four decades of progress. Even back in 1971, when North Carolina, the legislature, and the governor signed an Environmental Bill of Rights. And then in 1972, our people, the people of North Carolina, passed a constitutional amendment requiring that North Carolina preserve and protect its natural resources. And I remember I think I was in the eighth or the ninth grade when that uh, amendment was before the people. I remember actually campaigning for that constitutional amendment. And I know that I joined many of you here in the late 80s and 90s working. Uh, when I was a state legislator, I introduced legislation for the, for the first time making it a felony to commit certain environmental crimes. We had to have a big fight over that issue, but it was important to set the tone of making sure that we did not have polluters that were intentionally hurting our air and water. And Bill mentioned the Clean Smokestacks Act that we were all so proud of, a testament to collaboration because it was not just the people in this room, but it was our public utilities and our businesses all coming together and finding a win-win that not only protected our air, but enhanced our economy. Because we followed it up with groundbreaking renewable energy efforts, which are so important to our state. The renewable portfolio, the tax credits we had, those things that made North Carolina a leader in renewable energy. And, of course, the, the lawsuit against the Tennessee Valley Authority. That was quite a long road. Bill Ross needs to take a lot of credit for that effort. I remember that we tried to get the Tennessee Valley Authority to, to reduce their pollution coming into North Carolina because, as we told them, Pollution doesn't respect state boundaries. And our scientists were telling us, and I'm grateful for all of you who 
who helped in that effort. We had a number of scientists at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill identifying specifically where this pollution was coming from. And not only did it cause problems with our beautiful vistas in the mountains, those of you who remember the 80s and the 90s, we'd have some very bad air days there. And I remember talking to a mother who Kid, two of her kids had asthma, and some days she just could not let them outside. And people who had breathing problems and health issues were suffering because of this, in addition to our tourism economy, which was hurting, and we know all the other problems it was causing. And so we contacted the TVA, didn't get response, and we wrote them nice letters and didn't get response, and we wrote them tougher letters and get, didn't get response. And finally, we figured that we had to take action. And we came up with a relatively novel public nuisance theory that uh, I don't think they took seriously at first. But we pushed it and pushed it and had excellent lawyers who moved it forward. And we were victorious in federal district court. And later on, when the administration changed in Washington in 2008-2009. We were able to co-opt the Environmental Protection Agency. And we ended us with a settlement that required the Tennessee Valley Authority to close a number of their coal-fired plants and to retrofit a number of them. And so now scientists tell us directly as a result of that lawsuit and the subsequent settlement that there are dozens and dozens, there's a dispute as to over how many there are, but there are dozens and dozens for sure of significantly clearer air days in North Carolina as a result of that action. And I'm very proud of it. We have made a lot of progress and to know where you go, you're going, you've got to look at where you've been. But in the last few years, we have seen decades of work unravel before our very eyes. We have a, a governor, that administration, and a legislative leadership that is reducing the number of inspections. They have reduced the number of inspectors. They are making it easier for polluters to escape, to escape liability. They have eliminated a number of safeguards. They have rolled back laws that help make North Carolina a renewable energy leader, and more of those laws are at risk. They have talked about, with the Department of Environmental Quality, customer service and how important that is. But unfortunately, customer service has been put ahead of public safety. We've seen them be focused more on generating lawsuits and scoring political points than on collaboration that we have seen before, where North Carolina is in a perfect position to negotiate and move forward that would help our air and our economy. But we have seen instead, we'd rather sue the Environmental Protection Agency, we'd rather enter into litigation, we'd rather put forward plans that we know are going to fail simply to enhance litigation. And it is wrong. I think those of us in this room and all over North Carolina we have a choice and we have a challenge. The choice is do we choose leadership that is going to reflect the efforts of the last four decades or are we going to choose reckless destruction like we have seen the last four years? I think I know what leadership the people in this room choose. The challenge, the challenge we face is that we have to keep fighting now 
in the public policy arena, putting pressure on our governor and our legislature to do the right things, to make sure that we preserve as much as possible our renewable energy efforts and that we make sure that we put in place common sense safeguards that end up helping everyone, not just protecting our natural resources, but also protecting our economy. And we have a challenge in the political arena. This is a nonprofit organization, but all of you are involved in politics. And you have to make choices as to what kind of leadership do you want. Do you want leaders who eliminate laws that can protect us from pollution? Or do you want leaders who are ready to step up and do the things that we know we need to do to protect our air and our water and to make sure we move the economy forward? I want my state back. I think all of us in this room want our state back because we know the kind of state that we can be. I believe that our natural resources, our beaches, our mountains, our coastal plains, our Piedmont, it's unmatched. It's unrivaled. We do owe it to future generations to make sure that we preserve it and make it better than ever. I believe with all my heart that North Carolina is better than this. And all of the people here want us to move forward in that way. And let's leave committed. Let's leave committed to making sure we do that. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful.